Railroad crossings are lifesavers. They protect us from the danger that we can lose life by hitting an upcoming train. But how do they work? In this video I'll show some objects near the crossing that are important during the time that the railroad crossing have to be closed for a train. Most railroad crossings are fully automatic. When a train passes a certain point, the crossing bells ring and the lights come on, after which the barriers are lowered. Here you see a Dutch type of detection point. It looks different in every country, but ultimately it serves the same function. These gray cabinets contain small computers and wires that convert the information received from the detection point directly into the activation of the crossing. This is roughly what such a cabinet looks like from the inside. You also see these gray cabinets at traffic lights, for example, and after a long row of street lamps, but let's not talk about that right now. By counting the train's axles, the level crossing knows after how many axles have passed before the barriers can be raised. But what counts as one axle of the train? Well, this is considered one axle of the train. If you have three normal train wagons, it should be 12 axles because one side of the wagon has two axles each. So, after the detection point on the other side of the train announcement point has counted the axles, that information is sent back to the gray boxes, which will then reopen the crossing to road traffic. Of course this will go automatically at this crossing. No humans are controlling this cool system. So, now you know a lot more about railroad crossings and how they work. If there is something I didn't tell you, let us all know down in the comments and thank you for watching. To see the process of the railroad crossing, press on one of my videos on my channel. You can watch also a lot more countries than only the Netherlands. Enjoy and I'll see you next time.